Arts and Film, but this goes much further. We ask Magnum, our cooperation partner, to suggest assignments and we realize this with the Magnum photographer Jakob Aue Sobor. He boarded the number one train. Sorry, it's the number two train. As the I enter the streets of Moscow the day I arrive, I need to get my body moving. I photograph everything on my way: buildings, trees, snow, paths, lights, and the people. I need people. I need communication. I never know who I will meet or what will happen. The whole idea had been, uh, the project had been to meet people on the train and make intimate stories from the train compartments. But riding this ghost train, I had to change the concept. The intimate work had to come from my encounters with people in the cities and in the train became more of the red thread connecting the cities. Moscow, Ulaanbaatar and Beijing. On the train, I ended up with the camera glued to the window, photographing the change of landscape. As we were led along the Russian forest, the Mongolian desert, and through the mountains to Beijing. But it was not only Russia, Mongolia, and China that was unknown land to me. So was my equipment. Where's the camera? I, actually, I haven't seen it since the trip. I missed it, uh, but uh, <laughs> the new Leica A monochrome and the 50mm Apple Super Pro lens. On top of this, it was my very first time using digital. 
and it's also the first time working with a Leica camera. So everything was new, but then again, my ambition is always the same. To use the camera as a tool to create contact, closeness and intimacy. I want to meet people, to connect with the cities, to make the places mine, even if it's just for a short while. <coughs> I had the greatest experience in Mongolia when I ran into a group of Mongolian hunters who invited me to join them on a trip through the mountains that surround Ulaanbaatar. This reminded me of my life in Greenland. When I was 23, I lived in a small settlement of the east coast of Greenland where I was trained as a hunter. The relation you create to nature as a hunter has had a big influence on my life and my work as a photographer. Meeting the Mongolian hunter, I immediately felt like putting the camera away and picking up the rifle. And when he shot and slaughtered a deer, we drank the warm blood and ate the raw liver together. I can only find emotions in black and white. Every time I start a new project, I start shooting in color because I'm afraid <laughs> to repeat myself. But later I realize that it is not really something I can make a rational decision about. If I can't emotionally connect with my images, if I cannot feel that pinch in my stomach, they mean nothing to me. And so I always return to black and white and find my voice again. Working with black and white has also been the most direct way for me to reach more existential questions. In black and white, I feel my images are not bound to a specific location or time. They create their own universe. I like to think that they are about something else and more than just what they show. At least that is my ambition. To focus on our emotions and a state of mind that is not defined by how we look or where we come from, but on the things that connect us and make us dependent on each other. It is no coincidence that my images of a young couple from Moscow and my image of a young couple from Beijing carry some of the same emotions. The most bizarre question I ever got from a journalist was from a photo magazine asking me if the figures in my images were mannequins. The mannequin series, he called it. He simply did not believe that it was possible to photograph <coughs> humans like this. But the people I photograph are real. And I look at them and I try to find something that connects us. I try to find peace of myself in them. I feel warm when I look at two people desperately holding on to each other saying, I cannot live without you. I admire all the people I take pictures of because they put themselves in a very vulnerable position. They trust me and it is important for me that there is a mutual understanding of this that we are communicating in a way that is not just me looking at them, but there is some kind of exchange. It has always been my ambition not only to look, but also to take part in life. It can be quite frustrating when you have tight deadlines. If I meet someone playing soccer in the street, I immediately feel like playing with them instead of just watching. I never found it interesting to look at someone from the other side of the street or to be invisible as a photographer. I hope this is the reason why people never feel like a voyeur looking at my images. Because you feel that you are taking part. To me, this is when images grow from showing to being. This is when the pictures are not telling a story about them, but about us. I'm looking forward to continue the journey with the 
new model from in the summer. And uh, by the way, I also want to say that I was not actually not alone on this trip. Uh, my editor, Sunhi Engstad, uh, who also did the short film. My editor, Sunhi Engstad, who also did the short film you saw. She looked through more than uh, 1,000 images per day. So it was a total of more than 30,000 images from this trip. Uh, also, Katja and Matthias did a lot of uh, post-production on the train. And uh, thank you for this, for, because without you, I would not have been able to, to carry through this in one month. Finally, thanks to Laika and Magnum and uh, Jonathan Rockhoff for putting all this together for me.